Item number SCP-2063 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2063 should be mounted on a stand when not being tested, and stored in a secure enclosure no smaller than 3 m by 3 m by 3 m. The stand itself should be securely mounted atop a 1.5 m tall pedestal affixed to the floor or otherwise securely fixed in the center of the room. Other than during approved testing, no object or obstruction other than the plastic stand is to come within a 1 meter spherical radius, centered on the point of contact between the ship and the stand, unless that object directly supports the stand itself. At least once every 60 days, SCP-2063 is to be removed from its plastic stand, carried around the enclosure for a period of five minutes, and then placed back onto its stand. This procedure has been demonstrated to prevent SCP-2063 from acting autonomously. However, in the event that SCP-2063 spontaneously attacks personnel or raises its shields, personnel are advised to immediately put down any tools or weapons, move more than two meters away from SCP-2063, and wait for SCP-2063 to lower its shields. This typically occurs after five minutes of inactivity. When its shields are down, SCP-2063 is generally considered safe to approach and can be manually retrieved. SCP-2063 should be continually monitored by electronic means for EM and radio transmissions, as well as movement and any unscheduled autonomous activity should be logged. All tests involving landing events must be scheduled in advance and approved by Site Management at Level 3 or higher, and should only be attempted within SCP-2063's secure enclosure. Outdoor testing is expressly prohibited. Landing events involving maps, globes, and other depictions of real locations are forbidden except as required by O5 Command. Destructive materials testing is currently prohibited. See Addendum 1 below. Deliberate observation of SCP-2063's autonomous behavior requires prior written approval from the Site's Security Director. Description. SCP-2063 is a resident model of the USS Enterprise NCC-1701, resembling the ship of the same name from the 1966 American television show, Star Trek. It measures approximately 28 centimeters in length at its longest point. It includes a battery enclosure, currently empty, with a removable cover and a black plastic display stand. Materials testing has revealed that the main bulk of the model is a solid mass of polyoxymethylene, laced with trace amounts of various heavy metals, including some radioactive isotopes, which have not been observed to lose mass as they decay, as well as traces of Cibrochron F scarlet dye and human DNA. SCP-2063's primary anomalous effect occurs when the ship is removed from its stand. Subjects handling the ship report auditory hallucinations consistent with the main theme of the original Star Trek television series, as well as various iconic sound effects reminiscent of the show. If the ship is then placed onto any object in the room other than its stand, the room containing SCP-2063 undergoes a landing event, as outlined below. In an SCP-2063 landing event, the room containing SCP-2063 becomes separated from the facility, appearing black and impenetrable and emitting no radiation except for a constant surface temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and radio waves which propagate normally between the interior of the room and the surrounding area. This makes it possible for researchers to communicate with test subjects inside the room during a landing event. Subjects in the room with SCP-2063 during a landing event likewise no longer perceives the outside world, other than the aforementioned behavior of radio waves. Instead, beyond the door and any windows, subject reports vistas of alien worlds, often corresponding either visually or thematically with the object SCP-2063 was placed upon. Furthermore, Placing SCP-2063 on similar objects often results in the room visiting the same world in successive tests. Examples of worlds that can be reliably accessed in this manner include Experiment ID Number SCP-2063 placed upon and resulting Xenoscape LE-003 Standard Conference Table A gray cityscape devoid of life LE-005 Balsa Wood Dresser a series of flat mesas apparently made out of balsa wood. Constant pecking noises were audible, coming from underground. LE-018 Pepperoni Pizza, hot. 
a series of vast underground chasms lined with pulsating, apparently organic masses. Molten lava visible at the bottom of the largest chamber. LE-019 Pepperoni pizza. Cooled. Same as previous tests except lava replaced with volcanic rock and wall grow dead and decaying. Plant flagged by test subjects in LE-018 was still present, but appeared chewed. LE-023 Poster depicting an annotated map of Earth's moon. Room connected to Earth's actual moon. D-Class were immediately sucked out of the room by explosive decompression. Later, Mayor Ibrium Outpost personnel confirmed the presence of human remains, initiated cleanup. Containment procedures updated to preclude the use of maps without O5 approval. Please refer to Document 2063-LE-L for a comprehensive list of worlds visited to date. Subjects within a room during a landing event can exit the room normally, walk around on the extraterrestrial landscape, and even retrieve objects and artifacts. However, all foreign objects so retrieved dissolve without trace within 20 seconds after the termination of the landing event. A landing event terminates when SCP-2063 is picked up again by a human subject or when all subjects affected by the landing event have been terminated. Upon termination of a landing event, the room is again visible and physically accessible from its original location on Earth. It should be noted that D-Class personnel tend to have a high mortality rate during landing events, for reasons that are not well understood, but which have been heavily speculated upon by researchers, D-Class personnel are invariably the first to be terminated by dangers present. Test groups comprised exclusively of researchers tend to fare better, although fatalities can still occur. It has been noted that when a mixed group of researchers and D-Class participate in the same landing event, subjects other than D-Class usually emerge unscathed. For this reason, it is recommended that at least one D-Class personnel accompany any researcher or group of researchers wishing to study a landing event firsthand. SCP-2063 Secondary Anomalous Properties manifest when approximately 70 days have elapsed without the object being handled, or when SCP-2063 perceives a threat to itself. In these situations, SCP-2063 becomes autonomous, and will detach from the stand of its own volition. It behaves in a manner similar to spaceships depicted on the show, flying around the room without apparent regard to gravity or momentum, emitting sweeps of radiation out to two meters and what is presumed to be active scanning, projecting a visible shield around the ship, and discharging energy weapons at threats, out to a maximum range of one meter. Targets have included a pair of wire cutters held by a researcher, a Rockwell-type hardness tester, the emitter of a 4,000-watt CO2 cutting laser, and most of a D-Class personnel who, unprompted, attempted to unscrew the main sensor array. The intelligence of SCP-2063 is a subject of ongoing study, but at this point appears to be quite limited. It does not seem to associate existing threats, such as destructive testing tools, with the individuals holding or operating those tools. In general, it will raise its shields immediately when it detects a threat, vaporize any part of that threat coming within one meter of it, and then lower its shield after the threat has been neutralized or has been out of scanning range for approximately five minutes. It will fly around the inside of its enclosure, but will generally not attempt to pass through open doors, exhibiting behavior similar to that observed in some species of fish when a glass partition is removed from their tank. However, it is emphasized that the Foundation first became aware of SCP-2063's atomic behavior when it used its energy weapons to cut its way out of the high-value material storage locker in which it had been stored for more than 70 days. Refer to Incident Report 2063-02 for details. Up until this point, SCP-2063 had been classified as safe. Due to the projected difficulty of re-establishing containment should SCP-2063 ever seriously attempt the breach, current containment procedures are designed to reduce the likelihood of any unscheduled autonomous activity manifesting in the first place. On September 8, 2012, SCP-2063 began transmitting the Fibonacci sequence. It has not, however, responded to any Foundation attempts to communicate. The resurgence of this transmission is often one of the first signs of atomic activity when the object had not been handled for more than 70 days. Addendum 1 Following Destructive Materials Test 2063-002 in which researchers attempted to remove a small portion of the main sensor dish, 
SCP-2063 has resisted all subsequent attempts at destructive testing with overwhelming, sometimes lethal force. Special containment procedures have been updated to establish best practices for this contingency. Congratulations. By reading this message, you have just told an alien piece of hardware what to do. Oh, don't worry. It's not in your workstation. We got it at the other end of a secure wired connection in sub-basement 03. Ever since one of the lab boys figured out how to make it talk, we've left this message here, both as a calling card and as a sort of aptitude test. By accessing this file, you just passed that test. You see, sometimes the objects retrieved from SCP-2063 don't melt away after you end the landing event. Sometimes we connect to really weird places that are nonetheless real. It's not just the moon. We've found computers, trinkets, clothing, creatures have followed us home. We get an occasional SCP object, but most of it is just stuff. And we never seem to find the people who created the stuff. There is one test that we performed early on, which was completely expunged from the records. Even the numbering system was changed to suppress awareness of it. Since then, we have been quietly moving key people around. We need as many people as we can get who can do what you've just done. You are hereby ordered to report to SCP-2063's enclosure at 0500 hours tomorrow. Ignore the testing procedures you are given at that time. Once the chamber door closes behind you, you will hear a buzzer. That sound is your indication that the cameras are no longer recording. Retrieve the ship from its stand. Remove the ship's battery cover. Place the battery cover on the floor exterior side down, and sit the ship down on top of it. Then step through the door. You will receive further instructions on the other side. Suffice it to say that you are about to embark upon what may be the most important experiment this institution has ever conducted. Welcome aboard. 05-9